Welcome to my channel, Management Accounting Made Easy. This is part 7A of Standard Costing and Variance Analysis. Here we are going to see planning variances and operational variances. Companies usually compare the actual performance with the standards in order to extract the variances. There are two ways a company can get variances. First one, due to planning errors, i.e. errors in the original standards. Variances may arise due to planning errors or inaccurate planning or any change that was not anticipated at the time when they were preparing the forecast, which may lead to wrong standards are being set. So in order to make the variance analysis meaningful, a revision of standards becomes necessary. Planning variances are often uncontrollable. This is the responsibility of the senior management. The second one, due to operational factors which arises from the differences between the actual outcomes and the realistic standards. Operational variances occurs, um, for example, if there is a general price increase in the labour market or material price increases due to shortage of material supply or within the organization, inefficient purchase of raw materials, machine breakdown, power failure, etc. Operational variances are generally controllable. Therefore, performance measurement must be based on operational variances. So here we are going to see how to calculate the planning and operational variances. First, we'll see the planning variances. Planning variances means there was a mistake in the original plan. So original plan, we need to compare the figures of the original plan. That is called X ante. With the revised budget figures, we call it ex post. So the planning variances, we calculate the difference between original budgeted figures, which is called ex ante, and the revised budgeted figures, which is called ex post. Original standards need to be adjusted in order to reflect the current situation or current condition. So that's why we are revising the original budget. Now we are going to see how to calculate the operational variance. Operational variances always you need to compare with the revised budget because the original budget is redundant. It's no use now. So we need to use the revised budget figures, take away the actual results you get the operational variances. Revised budget should be compared with the actual figures in order to make a meaningful comparison. So we'll see the purpose or reason for calculating planning and operational variances. Here I'm going to discuss in general, but when you are asked to analyze the purpose of planning and operational variances in an exam question, you must relate your answer to the question. You should not give answers in a general manner. So now we'll see the purpose of preparing the planning variance calculation. As we know, planning variances are uncontrollable. These are set by the top management or senior management. So when they set the budgets or standards, we can see the efficiency or the forecasting skills of the planning department. 
having an accurate budget for comparison with the actual data, that will give a meaningful comparison and also accurate forecast will help in providing a better base for future planning. So there are two things. We can check the efficiency or the forecasting skills of the planning uh, department. And also we can see how accurate their forecasts are in order to take, get a meaningful comparison. And also the budget set by them will help to prepare future forecast, a better future forecast. Now we'll see the purpose of operational variances calculations. These are the best measures in order to measure the departmental or divisional manager's efficiency, depending on the market conditions at that time. But we know divisional managers' performances should not be assessed in isolation. For example, say if you are assessing the material price variance. Um, say the material price variance is favorable, for example. So the manager might have bought cheap quality material, might have bought, okay, cheap quality material. But the usage variance can be an adverse one. Why? Cheaper quality material, more wastage. So the usage variance is an adverse variance. So that's why you should not assess the variances in isolation. You should see the interrelationship between the variances. Operational variance analysis will help to improve staff motivation. If an exam question asks you to assess the performance of the divisional manager, you must give a conclusion at the end whether the manager has done good or bad based on your variance calculations. So even though your variance calculations say, for example, they're wrong, but your analysis is right, so you get the marks for the analysis. So always you must give a conclusion whether the manager has done good or bad. We'll see the advantages of preparing planning variances. If you prepare planning variances, you will be having a realistic standard. So management will have a realistic standard. Therefore, whatever variances you are calculating, that will be meaningful. So a meaningful variance analysis can be calculated. Because you are extracting a meaningful variances, you can take corrective action. Because you have a realistic standard, meaningful operational variances can be extracted because you are going to compare the manager's actual performance with the realistic standard. Preparing planning variances will provide a better base for future planning, which we have seen before. Because normally companies base this year's budget to prepare the future budget. So if you have an accurate budget, that will provide a better base for future planning. Finally, realistic standards will increase the motivation of managers to achieve the targets because if you set unrealistic standards which the manager cannot achieve however much harder the manager works he cannot achieve for example then the manager wouldn't bother working harder to achieve the standard so realistic standards only will increase the motivation of managers in order to achieve the targets and you can measure the efficiency of the managers by having realistic standards. Thank you for watching. If you like, 
please like, share and subscribe. I'll see you in part 7b of standard costing and variance analysis with more planning and operational variances.